We're in part two of this series uh, called Seeds, and the principle of seeds is found throughout Scripture. Essentially, what, what this whole series boils down to is God wants you to grow. He wants you to grow. He wants you to be developed. He wants you to see this principle in action in your life, and you can grow if you're willing. Growth doesn't happen overnight. That's the principle of seed as well. We talked a lot about this last week. The growth doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it takes time. It takes careful attention. That is the power and principle of the seed. Now, we talked last week, Matt, last week, I, I enjoyed my own message last week. That's how, that's, I thought it was really great. It's just, I don't always think that, but last week, I thought it was pretty good. We want to talk about being processed people. We talked about, you know, focusing on the seed, not the fruit. But I'm, I'm, we're going to build on that today. We're going to talk about how, how a person goes through the process of, of being a seed person. And like, what is that? That process, like the process of developing and cultivating a seed is all about how you hear. That's what we're going to talk about all day today, all day today. It's, it's how you hear. It's in your listening. Um, I had a dog. I had a dog named Reach. No, I had a dog named Lucy. Lucy. That's a, that's a joke only like three of us will say. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I had a dog named Lucy, and she was this, this Catahoula pit bull. If she was standing on this table, which she could, she would be like this big right here, probably weighed all of 35, 40 pounds, nice stocky thing, a little cat, just pretty, pretty little puppy, just my little puppy. I love my Lucy puppy. She was so beautiful. And she was a pit bull, of course. I told you that, but, but we did not crop her ears. Her ears did not, you know, the pit bull look, you know, we got the triangles on top. I don't know why people do that because we left our, that, that dog has some big, beautiful ears hanging all the way down. You know the ones, you know the big dog ears that hang all the way down here and then you get the slow motion on your camera and it's like a helicopter. You know what I'm talking about, right? Big, beautiful ears. Couldn't hear anything I said. Any dog people in here? I was a dog person until I had that puppy right there. That dog came. Lucy, don't pee right there. Peeing right there. Lucy, don't, don't poop right there. Pooping right there. Oh, my God. Lucy, don't jump on people. <laughs> Didn't hear anything. Anything I said, Lucy would do the opposite. Big, beautiful ears. Good for nothing, these big, beautiful ears. It was horrible, man. Like, I, 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 can, I can't even tell half the stories because they're just raunchy. And like, Lucy, pull your life together. Use those ears. I'm trying to help you. We got the clicker. You know the clicker? Any, any dog people trying to like... Send, our, send your dog to the dog whisperer, you know, and you click, click, and you got the little, little uh, hot dogs in your pocket, you know, you got the, the little, little pieces, and anytime they do something right, man, I was, getting, I was getting my dog fat, doing nothing good at all. I'm just like, please, click, 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 hot dog, hot dog, please, please. Nothing worked, nothing worked. Lucy lives with my parents now on the ranch that is the Jones Manor over there in Yuba City. She's doing really good, but she had those big, floppy, gorgeous ears and couldn't hear, couldn't hear yeah. what, what, what she needed to hear. I think some Christians in the body of Christ are struggling with this. Y'all got some big, beautiful ears, just like, mm, wow, just like, wow, those ears, those ears, girl, yeah. man, those ears. I'm looking at my wife right now, those got some good ears. Any ladies ever been hit on by your ears? I sure hope not. And I sure hope that's not your husband now, okay? Mmm, you got some good ears, girl. <laughs> some Christians in the body of Christ are struggling with this. You got some big, beautiful ears. They work properly, but you just can't hear what the Lord is trying to show you. We can't hear what our pastors are trying to tell us. We can't hear what our leaders and our mentors and, and the things that God himself is trying to speak to us. Our ears are struggling. Matthew 13 is where we're going to be today. Matthew 13, this is a parable. Jesus is going to use a parable, um, and this is a really important parable. It's like the parable of parables in Matthew 13. You can kind of start to turn there if you want. We were just talking about this. We're going to fix this soon. I didn't get around to it, but I noticed that I tell you to turn in your Bible sometimes, and it's so dark in here you can't read your Bible. We're going to fix that. We're going we're to work on that a little bit in here. But for now, you can open up your phone maybe. You can see that good enough. But we're going to talk about this parable in, in found in Matthew uh, 13, it's the parable of the sower. And this is uh, a parable is among Jesus' favorite teaching techniques. Why? 
because it, kept, it keeps the arrogant people away. Oh, look at what he... Do you see this, people? All right, we have the best dream team in the whole world right now. Come on. Let's hear it for the dream team. They're great. They turn the lights on. Online's like, what is he clapping about? It's, uh, it's the lights are on in here. This, this parable in, in, in Matthew 13, this is called a meta parable. It's a parable about parables. It's a parable about how all the other parables work. And once you know it, it has to do with seeds. So let's read it. Let's read it together, if we will. Uh, starting, in Ma- starting in verse 1 in Matthew 13, it goes like this. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered together around him, and he got into a boat. He sat there and taught the people as, he stood, as they stood on the shore. This was common practice uh, for a, a teacher to like, be on a hillside or sit on some water because it would like, amplify their voice. And so this is common common stuff. He sat on that boat, used the water to amplify his voice. He's teaching the people. And he said this, listen, notice that word. Listen, listen, I want you to hear what I'm trying to say. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered them across the field, some seed fell on the footpath. Some birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on the the shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on the fertile soil. Say fertile soil. soil. Say it loud. Thank you. Thank you. It's Super Bowl Sunday, man. We're get, I'm getting you ready. I'm warming you up. That's, a, that's an important phrase. And we're going to go back to that a couple more times. It's an important for good soil, fertile soil. I'm going to say that like a hundred more times today. Fertile soil. And they produced a crop of 30, 60, even a hundred times as much as had been planted. How many of you have questions about like what that all means? Like the shallow soil, the rocky whatever. How many of you have questions about what that might mean? You don't, you're not raising your hand because you're like... I can't tell him that I don't understand it. Don't worry. The disciples didn't know either. They asked him. And next week, we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about what all of those mean, what all those represent. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into the, the, the big picture. So we'll get into what these mean. We'll get into what all those different kinds of soil means. But today, I want to look at the big picture of this is that everyone has potential. Everyone's got soil. Everyone will progress, but everyone will progress at different levels. We all do so at different levels. And what's the main difference? The difference is the quality. Is your soil fertile? Do you have fertile soil? And then verse 9 goes on to say this. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Got those big, beautiful ears, man. Plop them up. Come on, let's listen. That's what Jesus is saying. If you got ears to hear, I want you to listen to what God is saying. This is what Jesus is saying. It's possible to get the soil in the right condition for you to receive the seed. You're like, I wonder what condition I got. I wonder what, in my 30, 60, 100 fold, whatever, what do I got? You have the potential, every single one of you. I can see you now. I can see your faces. I can see you. And I, I'm telling you, you have all that you need to make that choice. What kind, of, what kind of soil do I have? Is it hard? Is it rocky? Is it fertile? Is it good? It's, it's up to you. It's up to you. Just because a person has ears doesn't mean you can hear. We all have soil, but is it good soil? If this parable teaches us anything, it's the quality of your soil is the quality of your hearing and understanding. It's the quality of your hearing and understanding. To improve your soil, you have to improve your ability to hear and understand. That's that's news to some people. That's, That's new information to some people. But Jesus told this parable about all the parables. That you need to learn to listen to what I'm saying. Lean in and really receive what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to tell you something about my experience, but you might see this too. I've seen people grow more in two years than people that have been in church for 50 years. Maybe you have too. What's the difference? It's the soil. It's their ability to hear, listen, understand, lean in. There's some people that have been around just long enough to where it's like, oh, yeah, I heard that before. Mm-hmm, yeah, oh, yeah, sower. Parable of sower. Yep, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Big, beautiful ears. Yeah. Can't hear what's being said. But you got some other people come in, and they're like, ooh, yeah, let me get my pen. They're writing it down. They're like so eager. And in two years, they go further, faster, leadership, ministering to others. And then some people been here 10, 15, 20 years, and they're like, I don't know why it's not working. You know, this church ain't working. You know, this church ain't no good. And then every church you go to, it's the same 
it's the same kind of story, you know? It's not your intellect. It's not how smart you are. I've seen, well, I don't want to call anybody. <laughs> not smart. That, was, that took an unfortunate turn in my mind. <laughs> it's not how smart you are. It's not your talent. It's not your age. It's not your background. Do I have a testimony? Do I have a good testimony, bad testimony? It's not your good looks. It's not your experience. Thank goodness, because uh, I didn't have any experience coming in. All I had was ears that I could listen with. It's not whether you're a cat person or a dog person. Come on, Lucy, turn me into a cat person. Amen, somebody. I don't know what happened there. No, it's just your ears. That's all it is. Your soil is your ears. I hope you're learning something today. I hope you're hearing me today. Your soil is your ability to receive. Your, the, the receptivity of your good soil is the receptivity of those big, beautiful ears that you got on your head. I was going to say face. Tiffany hates it when I say that. You're on your face. I want to add to this. Uh, last year, uh, I mean last week, excuse me, Tiffany laughing at me, messing me all up. Chill, huh? I'm doing my best here. <laughs> last week, we talked about focusing on the seed, not the fruit. Check that out. It, w- it was, I-, I thought it was really, really important uh, as far as learning goes and being focused on the process and not the outcome being focused on the process. We talked about, you know, there's two different kinds of people at the gym. They're kind of people that like look at their triceps in the mirror. And then there's kinds of people that are just focused on their, their routine. They're focused on their diet, you know, and those are the kinds of people that get the most results anyways. I told you, be process people. Be the kind of people obsessed with the process that you're going through, not necessarily the fruit you want to get. But I want to add to that today. I want to add to that. To focus on the seed is to care for the soil. To focus on the seed is to care for the soil. The soil is our heart. It's our mind. It's the environment which we receive from God. Good seed requires a healthy environment to grow. And the seed is Jesus himself. It's his salvation, but it's also everything represented in this word. The Bible says that the word became flesh. And so Jesus is the word. This is the word of God right here. It's our Bible. But Jesus is the word of God as well. So it's how we receive Jesus himself. But it's also how we receive everything he ever said, everything he taught about, all of his ways that, you know, the world has its ways. You know, you, you go out there in the world right now and in schools and, and all these different places, and they got all kinds of crazy ideas about what's okay, about what, about what things should be. And then Jesus has his, his standard, his way. We want to receive his way. And be, even if it doesn't make sense on the, on the front end, we want to be able to look at him and say, all right, Jesus, I'm listening to you. I mean, my soil had to be tilled up pretty good. So when I got saved, um, I didn't always have good soil. And I, I have to work to keep my soil tilled up, you know, with the rototiller of, you know. <laughs> anybody ever use a rot- rototiller anymore? Come on, anybody out there? Any farmers out there? You know, it's the thing. You hold it with the handles, and it's got these blades on there. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a lawnmower, but it's got like, it's just digging up the dirt. <laughs> like this and like your forearm get a good workout there my 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 dirt had to get rotated it up real good real good okay I, i'm a pastor with a past i have a story right like my my ground had to get tore up jails institutions on the verge of death man i got war stories that can compare with anybody else's but it took a lot for my hard heart to open up i hope I hope it doesn't take anybody as much as what I went through, but my heart had to get ripped open. My heart had to get like beat up a little bit and and life had to beat me up a little bit so that my heart was open to receive the salvation of Jesus and receive continued a learning and growing and understanding what he is. I I had to stay open after I got saved. I had to stay, my heart had to stay open to hear the direction he wanted me to go. I had to go through a, a, a drug program. Salvation Army drug program, man, that was not easy, okay? Uh, that was over 12 months of my life that I had to continue to submit, continue to have my heart open up to that. And, and even after that, graduating that and coming over here and, and, and coming to church here and looking for jobs and struggling with that and not knowing which way to go. Come on, has anybody ever had like a struggle not knowing where to go, not knowing what God wants me to do? Where am I supposed to go? What direction? My whole life after I got saved, it's been like this continued act of keeping the soil of my heart, you know, rototillered up. I don't know how to say that word, man. It is rough (laughs) right now, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So we need to learn how to listen well. 
And so I took from my experience, I also took from the word of God, and I, I've created like this little process. I, I've like, I've got, I got some lists, all right? I love me some lists. And so I made a couple lists of how we can do that, of how we can do that. This is the process of hearing God. This is the process of hearing God. The first thing is this, believe that he does speak. It seems a little obvious, but we need to have this, we need to walk around with this understanding that, okay, God created the universe and he created me, loves me. And then Jesus died and rose again. And he said, it's better that I go away because you're gonna have the Holy Spirit with you. So that means New Testament believers, us, we have the Holy Spirit available to us all the time. That means we ought to be walking around thinking, God could be speaking to me right now. <laughs> we could have our spiritual eyes open all the time, believing that he wants to speak to you in not just in church. He wants to speak to you at work. He wants to speak to you at home. He wants to speak to you on your commute. He wants to speak to you all the time. Believe that he does, can, and wants to speak to you. It's not mysterious. This is not just for pastors that went to seminary. No, you have to believe that he wants to speak to you daily all the time. That's number one. The second one is predetermined to fully submit to what he says. That's an, that's an important one. That's, that's pretty important. But I, I, I phrased it this way on purpose because we need to pre-decide that when he speaks to me, I'm going to listen. Because if he speaks to me, there's a great chance I'm not going to want to do what he says for me to do. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, pastor keeps talking about giving all the time. And you're like, I don't know if I like that one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that one's for me, you know, like, you know, I, I see, I meet a lot of people coming to church, getting saved and, and doing good. They're like, oh, God. How, oh, Holy Spirit, I love you. Come fill my life. Oh, Lord, I'll do anything you say. And then he's like, do that. And you're like, oh, ooh, not that, Lord. Ooh, not, the, not that, Lord. Anything, anything but that, Lord. <laughs> I'll do anything. Uh, you know, like the, the Lord might speak to you about something financial. You know, you know submit finance. Ooh, oh, you know, like you got that vein. Oh, you know, how it's got this little thing on your wallet side right here. You're like, you know what? I'll give you any other area of my life. It's going to be good. Or how about all the single people in the room? You're like, oh, praying, Lord, I'm just believing in you. I'm just, you know, and he calls you to singleness for a season. You're like, ooh, anything but that, Lord, anything but that. You know, sometimes the Lord asks us to participate in a season and it's not our favorite season. <laughs> and it's not something that we're looking forward to. But pre-decide that when he speaks to me, I'm going to do what he says. So believe he does speak. Predetermined to fully submit to what he says. Um, this, this third one, really important. Filter it through his word. This is the process of hearing God. Filter it through his word. This is super Super important uh, because we live in the most opinionated generation ever, never with less truth. The most opinionated generation, society ever, never with the, 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 our society and culture that we live in has never been less Bible literate than we are right now. And we have more, and we're more opinionated than we've ever been. It's amazing. It's amazing. So we got, we're more opinionated. We know the Bible less. And so what I just want to tell you is, and I want to submit this to you. Whatever he speaks will never violate the 66 books found in this from Genesis to Revelation that he will never, he will never go against that. When he speaks to you, you're like, oh, I just feel like he wants me to, to be with her. He wants me to be with him. Or, oh, you know what? He, I think he wants me to fill in the blank. Just fill in whatever blank you like. You know, I'm not trying to push any buttons today. I'm not trying to get in your, your total business right now. But there's some things that we know aren't in here. And then we say things like, well, I just feel like, I feel like it's okay this time. I feel like it's for me, you know, this is okay. He will never speak contrary to his word because Jesus is the word of God. So why would, why would the Holy Spirit speak something that's not Jesus? It doesn't make sense. So he will never, so if you're ever confused, like what's God speaking? I'm not sure. Is he telling me to do this? Is he telling me to do that? You can go right here. And the Bible is, I mean, admittedly, vague in some areas. Like if it's vague here, you can be vague there. But if it's clear about something, dang it, be clear about that thing. All right, let the Bible speak to you. Let the Bible read you and decide to filter everything through God's word and not go anything. I mean, because if, if it's not supported by God, God's word, you may have heard it, but you didn't hear it from God. 
which is scary because there's more than God's voice out there. There's the enemy's voice too. And there's our own voice. And we are never, we're, we're pretty easily deceived by ourselves sometimes, but I'll get into that in a, in a minute. Discuss it with trusted voices. The next one, discuss it with trusted voices. Um, this is critical. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. The people around you, the people you're deciding to spend most of your time with, even if it's online, even if you're like getting input from certain voices, you show me your friends and the people that you're spending most of your time with getting from, discuss what you're hearing from God. So you believe he speaks, right? You're filtering it through his word. You're deciding to, to submit to everything he says. But I want you to include some trusted voices in that. It's an important thing because you, you don't have the whole Bible memorized. I'm just guessing. You don't have the whole Bible memorized. But there's other people in your life. And, and, and the Bible calls it iron sharpening iron. You know, it's like this grinding effect. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. But people will speak into your life and say, look, I can... I, People who love God, people who are pursuing him, they're going to be around your life. And do you have anybody like that in your life? That's why life groups are the lifeblood of this church. It's, it's, it's what keeps us healthy. It's what keeps you healthy is having people like that, people who, who also know God, who are pursuing God. They don't have to be perfect. And I'm not saying these groups are perfect. They're just people. So of course they're not perfect. But it's people in your life, and you're going to find your people doing that, and they're going to be the ones praying for you, filtering the thing. You know, I feel like... I feel like I need to go over here and do that. And all three of those people in that group are going to be like, you know, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Filter what you think you hear God saying through those trusted voices as well. All right. And then this last one, uh, continue taking steps while remaining open. This is a big one for people like me uh, that get analysis paralysis. <laughs> Anybody else like that out here? Um, I get that. I'm, I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't have analysis. God will show you as you go. God will show you as you go. Like if you have, a, you, you may not have all the information about said thing that you want to go towards or, or, or said thing that you're wrestling with, thing that you're struggling with and God's speaking to you. You may not have all the information you need, but I'm guessing you have enough information for today. You have enough information for today to make good choices today. So don't get stuck in the future like I would, like I do sometimes with analysis. Oh, I don't know anything. And so I, and since I'm not 100% sure, you know, should I buy the house? Should I not buy the house? Oh, well, it doesn't say whether I, I should buy 325 Greenwood Drive. It doesn't say that. So I just can't be sure. It's like, come on, come on. Okay, you filtered it through God's word. God's word didn't say you shouldn't buy a house or buy that other house. And all of the voices in your life are like, you could if you want. You can grow as you go. It's okay, because you will grow as you even make some mistakes, and you'll get better at hearing his voice as you go, because then you'll make that choice. You'll buy that house when you sh really shouldn't have, and then you'll look back and go, oh, I remember that feeling I had. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. You'll grow as you go, but continue moving forward, man. Don't let that freeze you in place so that you can't just move forward. I don't know which group to go to. They all, they all look good, or they all look bad, and I just don't know which one to go to, and so I'm just not going to go to any. Don't have analysis paralysis. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so last list I'm going to give you. I'm just list heavy today. But this is, this, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. And I want to give you uh, creating a healthy environment in your life to hear from God. Creating a healthy environment to hear from God. Number one is this. Admit and overcome your bias. Admit and overcome your bias. Your bias. And so I'm going to talk about this word bias a little bit. We all have what's called a paradigm. It's a, it's a worldview. It's a lens through which you see things. If you think you don't have one, you're blind to yours. That's, all, that's, that's the truth. We all have that. We all have that. Remember when I said we live in the most, um, we live in the most uh, opinionated culture ever? It's, it's that. We have our, our worldviews are now stronger than they've ever been before. Not less, more, more. The lenses from which we see. And the biggest thing stopping you from receiving 100-fold production in your life is your bias. The things you walk into church with. The things holding you back from the very first step in. It's sad, and I've seen it many times when you've been hurt in the past. Or someone spoke over you negatively, and now you have a bias. Now you have a worldview. It's when someone says, oh, I don't, or when someone says to, to you, and I've heard people say that, don't, you shouldn't trust the church. 
you shouldn't trust the church. Like when I first got saved, there's people that are like, oh yeah, get into the recovery stuff, but you shouldn't trust the church. That became a bias I had to overcome. That became a bias I had to overcome. It's when someone says, oh, you know, they're always after your money. They're always after your money. And now every time pastor mentions money, uh, it's like, oh man, I, I knew it. It's a worldview. It's a bias because someone told you that. That was not a bias I walked in with, so it's not one I had to overcome, but I know many people do have that one. How about this one? I learned this one this week. Someone told me that this is how they were raised or this is what they saw. This is what they were told. It's all a big show. Oh, man, sure. All, it's all a big show. It's all some, some big show so people can get attention, and then some people are doing their hand thing because it's like, and then the pastor drives a whatever kind of car, and it's just all a big show. I'd never heard that one before. So that's obviously not in my, you know, bias but it's in many other people's. And it's, it's a real challenge because now people walk into church with all different kinds of preconceived notions that they have to overcome in order to hear from God. Because all of those voices, all of that, all that worldview, all that stuff is keeping you from really hearing God because you're not open. Your, your soil is hard when, you, when, we, when we don't see that and we don't break free from it. So that's why people walk into church asking, why is he dressed like that? I mean, you're looking like that uh, Miami Vice guy. Like, why is he dressed like that? Like, what, what's up with that? Why is it smoky in here? Is it on fire? Like, ugh, why do they do that? Or like, why are these songs? How come they only do three? How come they don't do more? How come it's like, why is he doing a drum solo at the end? Like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Why do they want my connection card? Huh? What's their angle? Huh? You want me to write my number down? Hmm. You know, so it's like, we even like, we even have to work into our language. Like, we're not going to spam you. Why do we say that? Because people have preconceived notions. People have biases. People are scared of church. Why? Because we've all been like, because TV has raised us, because people have told us to not trust church. People have told other people's experiences have shaped us and given us glasses that, and it's just not having open, it's not having an open heart. It's not having soil that's like, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have any sense. I'm not saying you shouldn't use your mind. I'm saying not everything that you've ever been told is true. Yeah. And maybe you're coming in with some, with some hangups and some hurts and some barriers that really don't belong there and are doing nothing but holding you up. Doing nothing. Admit and overcome your bias. I, I got the definition of a cognitive bias right here. I thought it was kind of funny, so I thought I'd read it to you. Cognitive bias goes like this. The way a particular person understands events, facts, and people based on their own particular set of beliefs and experiences that may not be reasonable or accurate. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Everybody thinks their own bias is accurate. Everyone thinks their own worldview is right. <laughs> I, could, I could say a lot, but I'm not going to. My restraint is like running thin right now. I was up late last night, so I'm like holding it back, y'all. I'm doing my best for you. I'm a good pastor right now. It's worse than it's ever been before. We have a smaller world than we've ever had before. Why? Because everything on your phone, all your apps, all the YouTube you watch, listen, it's their job to reinforce what you already believe. And they're great at it. They are so so good. It's their job. YouTube, Google, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you do. It knows you better than you know yourself. That's why they have money. That's why they have any money. That's why they have a business at all is because they know you. They know what you like. They know if you like football. They know if you like pickleball. They know what you're searching for. They remember. If you search for it once five years ago, they remember that. It's their job to remember it, and it makes our world smaller and smaller. So if, you, if you're any kind of conservative, if you're any kind of liberal, if you're any kind of football fan, if you're any kind of anything, they will continue to give you what you want, until you, and it's just everything. It's, it's just a, this funnel of only the way you see things. And I'm, me too. Like, I, and I, I like, I'll open my phone and see it and be like, oh, man, I'm not interested in that today. And they're like, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> it makes our soil harder. And, and that's why it's so hard these days. That's why it gets harder and harder every generation. It gets harder and harder to minister to the young people because it's like it's reinforced. And it's reinforced. And, and the Internet is teaching them. And, and YouTube is teaching us. And Google is teaching us. And, and television and whatever. And television is more overt. But even online and just any, any kind of device, even if you're not on social media, 
You don't have to be on social media for this to be an effect. It's working on you still. I'm just telling you. You need to appreciate and, and, and look at and combat your biases and go, okay, okay. Maybe there's more to this world than just what I'm seeing and, and just in this little pocket right here. It's big because it's hard to hear from God when you only believe what you believe and nothing can ever change in that. And we, we need to live here. We need to live right here, and more and more, it's, it's getting us away from what's in here. If, if, I'm, if I'm trapped anywhere, if I'm pigeonholed anywhere, I want to be pigeonholed right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I want to be living here. But out, out here in the world, we live in the world. You know, it's, it's not, we are not being fed this by the world. We're being fed everything contrary to what's in here. And so all I'm saying is be aware of your, of your biases and try to overcome them. Okay, and then the next one's this. Evaluate your busyness. We're talking about a, a, an environment to hear from God. I want, you to, I want you to evaluate your busyness. We all have things that keep us busy and, and don't produce what we're looking for. Busyness gets you twofold results. Jesus started with 30. <laughs> 30, 60, 100. It's awesome. Our own busyness, our own production, our own cunning, our own hard work, it'll get you some results. I'm not saying it won't. You can get the raise, you can get the promotion, you can get the nice house, you can get the cars, you can get twofold, maybe even three if you're a real hard worker. But everything that comes from Jesus, all that kind of abundant, 30 fold, hey, that's radical. All right, if you spend $100 on something and get 3,000 back, that's gangster right there. That's, that's, not, that's not your own cunning, that's, that's some Jesus, and that's the first level, 30, 60, we need to evaluate how much effort am I putting in to moving forward? I'm all about some hard work, but I'm just letting you know, sometimes we're spinning our wheels so hard, we're getting in God's way of how he wants to bless us. Evaluate your busyness to get that true overflow blessing. It comes from being connected and hearing God. And if you're too busy, you can't hear from God. I'm preaching to myself right now. The problem is some of us are impressed with our twofold results. <laughs> Smile on my face. I'm, I'm, I'm the Joel Osteen of Lodi. Some of you are impressed with your twofold results. Let Jesus bring 30 fold for you. You got to get over your own busyness, man. Have a Sabbath. Have a Sabbath. All right. This is, this is the one and uh, one of the 10 commandments that we have no problem breaking. Anybody okay? Like, Cheating on their spouse and like, oh yeah, it's no big deal. How about how about uh, you know murder? <laughs> you know, oh you know, it's, oh I didn't take a day off this week. You know, I'm just a hard worker. It's a weird thing that we've done to ourselves. Why did we why did we think we could we could stop doing that? You know, what day it lands on? I could teach you, I could teach you all day about you know it's it's all right to have it on a different day, but the important thing is is the principle of it. Take one whole day, man. Turn your phone off. The world will not end, all right? People will not die. You can even tell them in advance, hey, I take Fridays off. Man, and it's not about you. It's not like I didn't mean to get, not respond to you, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to honor God with a full day off where I just am listening for him. And it teaches us to depend on him, and it helps us to hear God as well. All right, this last one. Uh, believe God's working even when you can't see it. Believe God's working even when you can't see it. Don't underestimate slow growth. You can't always see what's happening under the surface. We trust he's working and we're open so we don't have to see everything moving forward. I, I think about the person that comes, you know, to me, um, you know, because since I'm, you know, the pastor, people always come and they want to tell me their problems and I'm supposed to fix everything, you know like that for them, and, it's, and, and they come to me, and this has happened, they come and they're like, you know, I, I'm just not doing so well in life, this is, a, this is a parable, this is not a person, I'm not talking about anybody here, I'm just saying that some people can come and they'll, and they'll go, hey man, my, my life's not going so good, my life's not going so good, so I, I, I cut out secular music, listening to all worship music, and I'm coming to church every week, and I started tithing, and I started doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing, whatever, and, and, and nothing's changing, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's been like 40 days, <laughs> all right? It's like you're clearing out a lot of weeds right now, a yeah. lot of weeds. 
And even though that tree hasn't grown up and started producing fruit yet, you wait. You keep, you hang in there, keep doing it. But like, we're in like this microwave culture where it's like, well, I listen to worship music for a week. My marriage is fixed, right? No, but it is a start. And we move forward. Like we, we need to believe that God's working even when we can't see the results. You know, seeds grow down before they grow up. Seeds germinate downward before they grow up. They, they sprout out. And I told you, I used to have a growing project before I got saved. You know what I'm saying? I know all about this. this it sprouts down. It starts getting more water. and starts getting the nutrients from underneath the surface long before it sprouts up. It starts getting the, the oxygen or the carbon dioxide that we're giving to them, the sunlight and all of that. Like it, it's, there's action going on beneath the surface. If you start putting God first and start doing the things God has been asking you to do, he's been speaking to you, and you start doing it, don't, don't worry if you can't see it right now. You got to believe and know that he's working even if you can't see it. Continue to stay faithful in those things. Continue to stay faithful in the word of God. Stay faithful in your devotions. Many of you need that word right now. You need it right now because that's exactly where you're at. You're grinding. You're trying to grow. You're trying to do everything that, that God has been showing, you, but you're frustrated because you can't see the growth. And I want to tell you, I want to speak to you, even prophetically, if you will, he is working. He's absolutely working. He's moving right now. He's moving some things that you can't see right now. He's preparing the way and he's breaking down walls in your heart brick by brick. He's dismantling the things that don't belong there and he's growing things up even if you can't see the results right now. He's moving in your life. He's speaking to you in the quiet place. God speaks in a whisper. He speaks in a whisper. And when we're busy, when we're not tuned into his word, able to hear, he with ears to hear, with those big, beautiful ears of yours, listen and get the things out of the way and, and believe he's working. He's speaking to you, developing you in the dark like those old-timey photographs they're, they're, they're coming to life. They're being developed in the dark. If you feel dark right now, if you feel like you're in the dark right now, just know you put God first, he's developing you. He's developing you. You're, you're, you're in that germination process. You're, you're growing. But even if you can't see it, hang in there. You know, Jesus sharing these parables, a lot of people didn't understand what he was saying. Lots of people. They came just like this and they were sitting, they were listening to him. I'm not Jesus, but they were listening to him just like this. And they couldn't, they couldn't hear it. They couldn't get it. Next week, we're going to look at all of the kinds of soils that he was describing here. It's going to be powerful. I don't want you to miss it. It's going to be awesome. But most of the people were just hard of hearing. They were hard of hearing. You know, a seed has to be sturdy enough to go through those tough times. A seed has to be sturdy and fragile at the same time. That's what believers need to be. That's what Christians need to be. We need to be sturdy enough to, to, to get thrown in the ground and to get trampled a little bit, but we also need to be sensitive and soft enough to allow that, to allow the sprout to happen. We need that, but I just want you to hear. I want you to hear because it's all about hearing what I'm trying to get across to you, what God is trying to get across to you. Remember what Isaiah 55 said, it is the same with my word. I send it out and it will always produce fruit. How often does his word produce fruit? Always. always. You put your faith and trust in him. You start, you start living your life based right here. Always. Always. Every, how many times? Always. Every time. Always, every time, he'll ne he never fails. Even if you feel like, Matt, what am I doing here? What is going on? I know, some, uh, I know some of us are just struggling right now. You're going through a hard season. You're going through a hard time with your relationships, with your finances, all different kind of friend circles, all of it. I understand that. I want to tell you, God's working on you. He, de he develops us in the dark, underneath the surface. If, you're, if you keep your, your soil fertile, you're going to grow. You will grow. His word won't return void. It will produce fruits. 
I tell people all the time, I, 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 I must say this every week, if you, if you do the things, you're gonna grow. You come to this church, you do the things, go to life groups, go to the, go through growth track. Look, you'll grow, you'll grow. Because it's the environment. It's the environment. You, you, you can't help but grow if you go through that process. You can't help it. You will grow. It might take time, it might take some energy, but you'll grow. So I want to invite you again. Um, next week is Growth Track. And it's, it's where we send people. It's where we invite people. It's where we encourage people to go so that you can discover your design and discover your purpose and know your spiritual gifts and begin to use them and, and develop them, grow them, become a part of this church. Understand for you to understand how you fit, how, how you fit, how this is your family here. That's what this is supposed to be, a spiritual family. So I'm inviting you again. Next week is Growth Track. I just to invite you. If you haven't been through it yet, you're, you're going to love it. We'll give you lunch. We'll watch your kids. It's going to be great. You're going to enjoy it. Hour and a half, boom. And you're going to be like, man, that's the best hour and a half I spent because now I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm dialed. Man, I'm in. This is my church. This is my people. These are, I've got it. I even know what my spiritual gifts are. Look, there they are right there. Discernment. And you're discerning right now that you should go to Growth Track next week. <laughs> Life groups. You know, like if you go through this process, this is the environment of growth. It's the environment of staying healthy, being able to hear from God, those trusted voices in your life. Don't just go. Go with ears to hear. Don't just show up to growth track just to do it. Don't just show up to the life groups just to do it. Go with ears to hear with an open heart, an open mind. You might be surprised finish off with this is where is your heart grown hard who said the things to you that have now gotten lodged in your soul that have kept you from really opening up kept you from really getting involved kept you from really tuning in to hear God what did you go through that hardened you maybe just thinking back to that and, and considering that and prayerfully asking God to heal you is where you need to start I remember, um, I remember when I got saved in the Salvation Army, and I didn't know anything about church. I'd never, I wasn't, sorry, Mom, wasn't raised in church, and, and I didn't have that experience. So what they had was the AA, NA stuff, you know, so I went to that. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but I'm going to tell you now, AA was created by a Christian man who discovered the principles for getting sober from the word of God and translated them into a way that if you weren't ready for church, you could still go through that 12-step process. It's, it's all in the Bible. I mean, it's even in the steps. It's like all about God, it's all, but it's, it doesn't have to be church yet. And so I remember getting to like the middle point. There's these steps four and five um, that are all about making lists. Um, you have to make lists of people that you had harmed and people that have harmed you and became willing to make amends to them. What is that? seeing my bias it's making my hard heart grow soft again it was a brutal process for me because i had put myself through a lot i don't blame anyone else for it now now i know it was it was me and i have my part to play and all of that but my heart my heart was so hard that i went through that with my with my person who was helping me i cried you know i i was like writing some stuff out trying to skate through it and he was like no 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 more more i'm like ah uh. And then I went through the fifth step, which is actually going to certain people that are agreeable to that and, and actually apologizing. Had to do that with my mom and dad, had to do that with different people. What was that? That, that process saved my life and allowed me to be the person I am today because my hard heart, that ground became soft again. I want that for you. I want that for you. It saved my life, it can save yours too. And of course, the, the, the most important seed you could possibly have is the seed of Jesus. But you've got to allow your heart to grow soft enough to receive it. You've got to let the soil of your heart grow soft enough. Yeah, like I'm all about manly men up in here, all right? I'm manly men that work hard, believe them, but you've got to be soft enough as well. You've got to have the tenderness to be able to receive a savior. <laughs> a savior, someone who saves you because you need saving. We all do. 
And we've got, to, we've got to appreciate the fact that I, I need my heart to grow soft enough to receive everything that God has for me. And I don't just need it in the moment of salvation. I also need it for the rest of my days here on earth. Amen? I want to pray that for you today. I'd love to impart that to you. I'd love to give that to you. So if you would with me, just bow your heads, close your eyes. I want to pray. Pray for us today. Father, thank you so much for open hearts today. Thank you for making our, the soil of our heart grow soft today and, and breaking up that hard ground. I believe even as I was preaching today, even as I was teaching today, you've highlighted some things in our minds. You've highlighted some, some past events and things that were said, things that were done, things that you experienced that has hardened our hearts and made us harder ground than we need to be. And it's keeping us from getting 30, 60, and 100-fold blessing in our life. And so, Lord, I just pray that it would be broken up all the way. Broken up all the way. Break up our hearts, Lord. Break up our soil. Help us to be in a receptive place to receive your son, Jesus. And that's my prayer, that we would all do that. If there's anyone here that needs to receive Jesus today, I want to pray a prayer for you in a moment. If there's anyone here that needs to come back, because you used to have fertile soil, you used to have soft soil, and then it grew, it grew hard somehow. Something happened. And you, you came out of the church and came out of relationship with him, and, and the, the ground got hard again. I'm, I'm ready to tell you that God can break up that ground again. He can break up that ground again, make you receptive again. So no matter who you are, if, you're, if, you're far, if you feel far from God and are ready to get close and ready to give your life to him, would you just raise your hand up for me so I know who I'm praying for? Come on, let's raise him up today and say, that's me. Amen. I see you. Hallelujah. I see you. I see you too. Amen. Anybody? I see you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Every hand is a soul saved today. This is amazing, and I'm so proud of you. Church, let's pray this prayer together. All together in the house today. No one praying alone today. Let's pray it out loud. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. Thank you for sending your son Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your spirit and make me new. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate all of those. Come on. Woo.